Hello everyone, this is a Quad QA meeting and today is um, August 16, 2018. Um, so for today's QA call, um, is there any specific agenda if anybody wants to discuss? I didn't have any uh, items, but I know that Sriju had a couple questions. So we thought like we can also discuss few QA related activities in this call if no other people are going to um, uh, join in the call. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, Andy, do you have any specific items for QA or that we want to discuss today? Uh, no, I don't have anything in particular to discuss. Okay, yeah, otherwise we thought like uh, we'll just go with some internal QA discussions then if there is no specific item. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so Sriju, do you have any questions? Uh, have you looked at the latest test plan? Yeah, I'm, I'm going through the test plan and also I'm, um, obviously, I mean, we had a meeting on Monday, so I was going through whether I would be able to um, contribute to the test case scripting. I, I feel like, yeah, I should be able to do it and I was, I'm planning to um, um, to generate the Kafka event so that we can test those uh, flow charts in the in the in the ONU flow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I did not uh, get a chance to go into details of the test plan. I was mostly uh, trying to figure out how to run the cases and uh, to understand the, the the existing test scripts and the framework, the robot framework. So yeah, I, I believe I, I I should be able to do it. Yeah, no problem, Siju. Thanks. Uh, I was mainly, um, I requested you to join the call because I wanted to see like in certification brigade, if you are started preparing the test plan, uh, mm -hmm. is there any any specifics to it? Or maybe uh, the, you, you, are you guys targeting something else? Because I haven't even looked at it, I guess. All right. So I added uh, the the port uh, the code port test plan which we already had. I made a few comments, and there is uh, still I have a confusion on how to structure it. Like what are the different uh, sections? Like um, like whether we should have a, a separate F cap section, and then we will have the the existing API test. So how to structure it? That that's an open point. And I also feel like uh, actually I stopped working on the word document. So. On the on, on on my local machine, I I thought like um, documenting these test cases uh, in 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 a spreadsheet would be uh, much easier to to get. To, I mean, it will be helpful to categorize it, and um, it will be much more clear than writing in, in a big uh, word document. And we can finally attach the the spreadsheet to the word document. So I started with uh, uh, directly reading from the FCAPS PDF from at and and I started uh, developing some uh, uh, test cases based upon that, like for the 802.1x, uh, uh, the EAPOL authentication, how, I mean, I mean, I know it's not there, right? But uh, so the test cases which I develop is mostly based on that because I think the test cases which you have in this test plan is on the on, on the workflow, mostly on the workflow. Mm. So I will be I should be able to reuse uh, the test cases which you have in in my test plan. So that that's why I mean it's it's did not do proceed. I mean. Uh, a lot, but that is the idea which I have, and I will be again. Um, I mean, adding uh, cases for the workflow, but which will eventually use the scripts which uh, you or I, I will also be contributing. But the way I structure it in the in the brigade um, will be a little different. So once I reach uh, a certain point, I'll send it to you. Okay, thanks, Riju. Yeah. yeah, probably once when you think that the uh, the test plan is good at a point where others can yeah. also review, then maybe one of the QA calls, we can bring it up and also send it across. I know that other people might have uh, some suggestions to yes. places where we have some questions because for, from Brigade point of view, uh, we might be targeting something else because we might also be uh, targeting regarding component-based testing, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. So probably, um, 
we might get more suggestions or ideas about which components to be targeted and uh, if we have yes. missed anything right yes yes yeah okay so yeah sounds good so i think maybe the big before the first uh, launch of the first brigade call uh before that maybe uh we yeah, can I, have I, a call that we should have a pretty good uh, document at least uh a good document which won't uh, detail uh, a lot of things but it will have uh, it will touch the different areas so that people know this is how how it is going to look like when we detail it further okay yeah, yeah. sounds good yeah, thanks, Piju. So, how are you planning to test them? So, do you are you bringing up any equipment at your end? Yes. Uh, yeah, we we are working with uh, Edgecore to get an OLT. So, we had uh, had discussion with uh, Jeff Catlin. I don't know the details yet. I think I meant to get the details from Greg. And I, we are also uh, uh, working on to get the the ONU from Alpha Networks. And also the the transceivers uh, from uh, mm -hmm. yeah I mean yeah so so yeah we are working on it so I don't I don't have a date like when all these devices will be available uh, but yes uh, so everything is uh, we are tracking everything and we are, yeah of course the plan is to get uh, an an OLT or a couple of oil news and just to, to set it up. Okay. Yeah. And now regarding the Alpha ON news, we have another company called Scrattle. I know Claudia was asking about it some time back. I yeah. do have the contact. Um, I will ask around if uh, it can be passed and uh, if we also can reach out from Brigade point of view. Sure, sure. We, uh, yeah, Claudia actually is, um, in contact at both the Alpha networks and Scrattle. Okay. And I think we, uh, I'm not sure because he's on vacation. I'm not sure what is the latest. I think the, the response was more positive from the Alpha Network side. Oh, okay. Yeah, they told that they have uh, devices and they have reserved it for us. So it's up to like, like since it's a prototype, but they need to have some NDAs with Jable because since Jable is a, a, an audio manufacturing company, right? So, the, so they need to have some NDAs. So there are some uh, procedures on that and uh, um actually unfortunately the guys the sales team is from taiwan and uh, the uh, the guy the guy or lady i mean who is uh, responsible for it she's on vacation and she uh, we are having a meeting on next week next tuesday to go through all these details so so i mean from our end yeah we are doing uh, everything to get to procure the oil teas and oil news okay all right yeah so i think we also have uh, flex as an acl coming up so maybe we can also utilize those resources in the meanwhile right and so that our work just gets going yeah. okay thanks Riju, for the information because not many uh, uh, because sometimes we also get out of date <laughs> <laughs> It's always good to sync up. <laughs> yeah, um, that's why I thought I will, I will not concentrate on the real workflow because for the real workflow, you need the ONUs and ONTs. And also for me to ramp up to the other uh, API or the, the, the Kafka related test cases, I don't need any access device for that. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. For some of the operations, yes, definitely we don't need any uh, real OLT ONU. Anything else for you from your side? Um, nothing. When uh, one more question, like uh, so, right now the the code Kafka, right? It's it's not exposed as a um, node port as in 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 Kubernetes. So that means like from externally, you won't be able to reach uh, uh, the Kafka services. You need to be within the cluster, the K8 cluster, to reach the uh, Kafka services. So do we? Uh, plan to have all our testing scripts stuff, everything is a container or something then i can put it as part of the kubernetes and so that it's within the cluster and then it can use the cluster ip to reach the uh, kafka services so i remember i mean we had uh, a container for the for the testing purposes and everything right is there any plan or we always uh, just use a use a dev machine we we uh, clone the uh, core tester uh, folder and then we run from there. 
Uh, so, yeah, we have two types of testing. I think on basically on the build jobs, what we are doing from Jenkins is as like an operator would do. So we are using a client machine where we are accessing the pod and running test cases. So mostly yeah. build jobs will be doing that way. Yeah. But we have yeah. other other kind of uh, tests where it's like Helm-based API tests, so which is uh, running as a container. So I think if you want to yeah. add some test cases, probably you can do in that way. Okay. If you okay. want to access these containers and then uh, do more those kind of testing. So okay. yeah, she, 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 she yeah. probably yeah. Left. I'm sorry, please go ahead. Um, yeah, if you take a look at the Exos API um, tester core tester container, you can deploy that in the Kubernetes pod. That way, you'll have access to you know Volta Kafka or all the services that are deployed in the pod. Um, if that way, because I know Core Kafka is not exposed outside of the pod, so you wouldn't be able to you know hit any of the Core Kafka um, APIs and stuff. So um, yeah, you could you look into the cord um, uh, to the Exos API tester container, um, mm -hmm. and maybe drop your test in there and try to execute them from there. Um, uh, yeah, if you need help with that or stuff like that, just let me know and we can sync up on that. Yeah, yeah. Let me try that. Yeah, yeah, that was I was I was I was reusing some one other container for it, but if we have some dedicated thing for that, it'll be better to put it from there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, another uh, generic question, like right now we have only the at and flow. So when we have uh, say f new flows from some other provider, uh, so we will have a, I don't know how different the flows will be, but we plan to have a different test plan or, uh, or you will have a new section under the same test plan. Yeah, uh, if it is within the same release, then uh, I would say that we would include in the same test plan and have a different workflow uh, based testing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right now I don't have any other question. I just uh, want to create a few scripts and uh, so I don't just do a trial and error, then we can add some logic into it for verification and everything. Okay, sure, sounds good, Srijus. But anytime, you don't need to wait for the QA call, but we can always yes. sync up even offline and then have a call. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Srijus. Thank you. Yeah, so Scott, we were uh, just discussing internally, but if there are any things for, for QA, specifically that you want to discuss, please uh, let us know. Uh, no, I don't have anything specific, thanks. Okay, thanks, Scott. Yeah, so um, not sure, Andy or Scott, if I have a couple questions in this from the test plan, uh, uh, especially for the AG switch and the NEMAG triggers, uh, they were, um, Sauro mentioned that we need to test the cross-connect service, can add BNG mapping to SVLAN. Any idea on this? You can help us. Explain this. Um, sure, I'm just I'm reading the what's on screen now to try to understand it. Um, BNG. Yeah. So what you want to be able to do is test that you can create BNG port mapping objects. Um, the BNG port mapping object. There's an S tag field that can be any of three different things. It can be either be an S tag, which is just um, you know an integer um, as a string. Mm -hmm. Um, it could be the string any, which would match any S tag, um, or it can be a range, you know, like one, two, three, dash, one, two, five, that would match uh, several different S tags. Um, okay. So, what, so yeah, you recommended, what is the recommendation? So, it can be used, any attribute can be used, like, or do we need to test all combinations, like any range and then a particular S tag? Yeah, well, it seems like what's called out here in the test document is to test at least the cases where you're doing a specific S tag and where you're using the string any. any. Um, I mean, if you want to, you could also do the range. I, I think it would be good to accommodate all three of them. Um, yeah, so this is this is part of a functional test, I assume, we're looking at here? Yes, that's correct. 
Yeah, so you'll want to set up that BNG port mapping, and then you'll want to verify um, that when all the synchronizers have run, that the proper the proper fabric cross connect was pushed to Onos. Okay, and uh, and here in this particular bullet, they also mentioned that the VLAN cross connects are added in the AG switch. Do we know that we have to test on like? on particularly on the fabric or if we test whether these uh, uh, I mean uh, cross connects are there as part of low I mean in the ONOS it's fine yeah I think you at least want to test that the the entries make it to ONOS um, as, as far as testing against the actual ag switch hardware mm -hmm. um, that sounds like a useful thing but that's that's outside of my area of expertise so I don't know um, how easy it is for you to actually query the hardware but I mean that does seem like it would be valuable um, but yeah I would I would ask one of the guys who's more familiar with the hardware on that mm. okay so is it Jono then yeah I think Jono would be a good person to ask okay thanks so thanks God Kailash or Yoweng, do you have any other questions from test plan for uh, Scott and Andy? Uh, no, all good on mine. I don't have any either. Okay. Anyone else has anything to discuss? Any other topics? Okay. Hey, um, this is this is Zach. I, I joined a little late. Um, when I when I get done with the Ponsim work, I was planning on doing the changes that Mateo suggested of making the Helm API test run um, periodically or after commit um, after merge. Um, but that's that probably isn't going to get done until either later today or sometime tomorrow. Oh, okay. So. Um, Zach, is that only on the um, Helm charts repo? Only on the Helm charts repo at this point. Yeah, okay, understood. Yeah. So, is the Ponsim uh, uh, functionality going to be available completely? Even the DHCP uh, was not working sometime back in the Ponsim. So, do you think Zach is that also going to be available? Andy would know better, but um, what I've what I've been working on is getting the um, there's a bunch of SSL incorrectness in Volta that I've been trying to untangle um, that hopefully will be untangled later today. Yeah, so we have, um, in order to get a fully working PONSIM, we have kind of three patches that need to get merged together. There's Zach's patch that he just mentioned. There's one that I've been working on um, to add serial number to the ONU in Ponsim, and then a patch from Jono that he forwarded me this morning, but I haven't really had a chance to look at, um, that uh, enables the data plane. And so that would, would enable DHCP. So I think we're gonna have to spend a little bit of time kind of reconciling all these patches because they touch a lot of the same code, but then hopefully um, maybe, you know, Early next week is my prediction that that we'll have something that that can do end-to-end -end testing on Ponson. Okay, thanks, Andy. I think um, I mainly was curious about this uh, Ponson. Was I know that there were some people from the community who reached out asking about Ponson regarding, uh, I mean, to to use it as part of their testing. They don't have OLTO in you, so that's the reason I was asking. But otherwise, we internally QA, we have um, a lot of items based on the workflow. We have to work based on the prioritizations that we uh, have discussed. So we will be pretty busy with it. And we have the OLTO in you. Thanks, Andy. Sounds good. Thanks, Andy. Sounds good. Yeah, I think I'm hoping that Ponsim will be a useful tool for the community as a whole and developers and hopefully QA once we get there. Yes, definitely.
All right, anything else? Okay, sounds like no. All right, then we will meet uh, two weeks from now again. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Bye.